Welcome back to the Buds in the Box YouTube channel. Before we get started, make sure you guys enter the giveaway. The details will be in the description below for the jersey giveaway. Now let's get into the topic of this video. Why the Toronto Maple Leafs will win the Stanley Cup this year. We've tried to be as least biased as possible, and we're going to try and make a video for every contender. So don't come, go in the comments and say, oh, you guys are just saying that because you're a Leafs fan. We're going to make a video for every team. And I'll start off with my point, and then we'll go to Jude, and then we'll go to Feli. So the first reason I believe the Toronto Maple Leafs will win the Stanley Cup is because no matter what you say, they are the favorite at this point to make it out of the playoffs, right? All the other teams, you know, they, they have a harder route to get past the second round. The Leafs are going to be playing the fourth place team if they come in first, and then they are going to have that confidence and momentum um, of beating the first round to make it on to the next round. Not only that, the only other teams that have made it past the first round in the past like few playoffs is the Vancouver Canucks. Last year, the Vancouver Canucks were the only Canadian team to make it out of the first round, right? So all those other teams are um, non-experienced just as much as the Leafs, right? And the Vancouver Canucks, let's face it, they're not making the playoffs. Not only that, the Toronto Maple Leafs have home advantage they will not be playing the Jets or Oilers until the second round. And they'll have that huge weight off their back once they make it to the second round. Right now, at this point, they have nothing to lose. Everyone, in the, Every fan of other team, you know, they say, oh, the Leafs suck. They're never making it past the first round. So right now, they have nothing to lose, right? And, you know, they have the new additions, so that will just increase their chances. But we'll move on to the second topic. Uh, Jude, you want to take the penalty kill and power play like the special teams go ahead yeah for sure well um i i'm gonna butt into felly's uh felly's point which is the acquisitions right um but uh and that's felino so i i, I don't know with with our penalty kill already uh to, to when we were going on that unbelievable tear <laughs> um it like we were we were a scary penalty killer right and uh and now with the addition of felino he's He's known for that. He's he's great for for that kind of play, like that that two way style forward. Uh, so you know what, I'm I'm excited to see the way the penalty kill plays. And like Felly said in a lot of podcasts, is the special teams are <laughs> the special teams are extremely extremely important for a hockey game. If you want, if you're gonna win a a playoff game, if you're gonna win a game, you need to capitalize and make sure the other team doesn't capitalize during special teams. And that leads me to my to the power play. And I mean. Just, just, just to begin with that first line, like you put Matthews and Martin on a line, and they're they're killer. You put them on a line with Tavares in front of the net, like just, just, just like it's it's kind of self-explanatory at that point. Just the upfront skill on that power play, and right now, as as we all know, it's not it's not what you you'd expect when you put Tavares on the power play. But for some reason, Keith is switching it around, and we're not seeing Tavares on that power play these past couple of games, and in and out with these couple of power plays. So it's. It's it's questionable, but uh, but he and I guess I guess we we trust Kiefer whatever he's doing right now, and um, I say Kiefer. <laughs> hey, Kiefer. <laughs> I don't know. I I like uh, I we all trust him, so we can see uh, what he does in these in these coming days. But Feli acquisitions, your thoughts? Yeah, for, <laughs> sorry about the laughing. <laughs> um, we were just talking. Uh, anyway. Yeah, um, but no, that's, I think that, uh, you know, the Leafs, um, you know, they're going to win the Stanley cup this year. Um, you know, if they do, it's going to be because of, well, first of all, I think the biggest part is, is fixing the power play. And that's what you was just talking about there makes perfect sense. You really can't win a, you know, it's hard to win games, no matter how good you are at full strength, uh, to win a game when you're not producing or on the power play and when you're not killing power penalty kills on you know, properly. So um, that, that for me is the biggest part. And then obviously the other biggest part is the acquisitions that, that uh, Dubis made at the deadline, because, you know, picking up Felino, that's, that's huge. Picking up uh, Riddick, that's, that's really big for the team too. I think having another goalie there because you don't know Anderson's um, you know, we don't know his situation at the moment. Right. So um with Anderson being questionable for the playoffs, um, it's it's good to have Riddick there because Hutchinson you really can't trust him. Um, in terms of Ben Hutton, 
being a, you know, a seventh D um, maybe six D if, you know, it's just good because it's hard to trust someone like Sandine, you know, you can't bring him up and he's really never played any NHL games, let alone a playoff game. Right. So that would be a lot of pressure to put on someone that young to put the, just to like put them in a playoff game. So getting Ben Hutton, he's been in the league for a little while. Um, you know, he's, he's a solid penalty killing defenseman. So why not have him in the lineup? And then Felino, you know, the biggest piece, obviously. I personally don't really care about the first rounder that he had to give up uh, to get him, to get Felino, um, because this year's draft is so up in the air. It's so up in the air that, like, um, you know, that's not the biggest deal for me. And, you know, hopefully a late, late first round pick, uh, depending on how the Leafs do in the playoffs. But, um, yeah, so that first round pick doesn't really matter to me. And then um, Felino, I think he can just be a big presence. I think I want to see him. A lot of people are saying they want to see him on the third line with like uh, Mikheyev or, or something, but, and just like them being a shutdown line. I personally think that um, having a guy like Felino with Tavares and Nylander gives Tavares and Nylander that much more freedom to, to go do what they want to do, you know? I feel like Tavares has felt a big burden of playing defense this year. Like he, you know, he's playing with Nylander who's not a defensive minded guy whatsoever. Um, so Tavares has had to take a, on a bigger role of going back and playing more defense, especially as a centerman. Uh, but if Felino goes on is where he's going to be put at least the first couple of games. I hope that's where he gets put. I think Tavares will definitely have feel that he can do more offensively which is exactly what the Leafs need is because the Leafs, they have two lines that are dangerous, but like that would make it even more dangerous. And um, Tavares is going crazy right now anyways. So keep him like that. That's another point. I know we're talking about acquisitions, but Tavares, I think if Tavares is hot, the whole team is going to be hot. I think it all stems from him. He's the captain, he's the leader, but when he's not hot, it's, it's scary because Matthews and Marner have to do everything. But when Tavares is continuously contributing every game, like he has been the past five to ten games, it's, that, that makes the Leafs a much better team. For sure. Yeah. And and just to expand off that point, kind of like the final point, um, you know, everyone's saying the Leafs aren't experienced. Well, now you have Matthews and Marner, all those young guys, hungry because they've lost the first round, you know, three times in a row. And then you're adding the experience of Simmons, Thornton, all these guys who have been there, done that. And, and another one that you, you guys forgot was Riley Nash. We always forget about him just because we, we feel like right. that trade wasn't there, but he's a solid, like experienced guy. You can definitely help in the playoffs, you know, even center, like a line for sure. When he comes back in the playoffs. So yeah. We have to, I we saw have to about that. Yeah. There was some like mock, um, you know, lineups for the playoffs that I saw and they have like, Ryan Nash third line like centering fully you know and and McKayev or something and yeah. I don't see that happening I think Riley Nash is purely there um right now he's there for cap I mean I don't know I mean from what I know about the guy he's not that great um even I think the only player I would put him in for is Thornton yeah and I don't think they want to move Thornton because for some reason, but that's the only guy I can really see moving out for Riley Nash because when you look at the lineup, who's moving Kerfoot, you're not going to take Kerfoot off the third line sure. and put him down. I mean, I don't know who else you would move Engvall maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he, uh, Riley Nash was on that Boston team when they beat the Leafs yeah. in that first, first round. So, I mean, he, he could come in handy, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I know. I've just from what I've seen of him, I I wasn't very impressed. But yeah, um, I'm sure he'll be a maybe he'll be a huge piece, and we can go back get this clip and make fun <laughs> of me for it. But but <laughs> for what I know, I don't think he's going to be much of a presence in the playoffs, or what at least what people are saying he will be. I don't think he'll be close to that, but we'll yeah. see. Well, well, that line is a great example of like leaf fence over their heads kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in a sense, in a sense, you can you can look and. and and uh, and judge off the first couple of games, like if Engvall isn't there, you know what I mean. Like if he's just not 
not playing like himself, like maybe we could get that grid into the playoffs and, and take that, take that Barry Trotz kind of route. But, um, but, but at this point, like it's, it doesn't really look like he fits. I think it's a lot like a Ben Hutton pickup too. Like, yeah. Um, it's kind of like if someone does get injured, you have to have extra guys there. And, you know, Robertson, obviously he can play at the NHL level. He had an amazing game last game for the Leafs. Had a terrible game, but he had an amazing game. Um, so he he could play, but you also don't want to ruin his entry level deal. Yeah. Um, which I don't think it counts in the playoffs, right? Yeah, it doesn't count. So as long as he doesn't play 10 games before the playoffs, you know, I think he's at like three right now or four. It lowered though due to the shortened season. I think Did it? Seven. Okay, so I think he's played like three or four. I'm sure they'll just save him for the playoffs because they're not going to ruin his entry level deal. But yeah, that's it, right? Like you got you got Robertson, and then um, who came in the other uh, last game? Brooks, right? Brooks. Adam Brooks. Sabrin. So you know he's he's solid, but you want a guy that's had some NHL, like a lot of NHL experience. Riley Nash has had a bit, you know, more. So I think that's more of a pure kind of injury. If someone gets injured, yeah. kind of like yeah. Hutton. Yeah. Step. Yeah, and there you go. If if do you guys have any other other things to say? No, I mean I think everything that we've said kind of just shows that the Leafs are going to win the Stanley Cup this year. Yeah, yeah. And that, we're going to go back to that clip, game. and we're going to play it after the Leafs win the Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll make a video for every team so that we can go back and say we were right. Every every Stanley Cup contender. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. No, let's actually make Look, a This video. is why the Buffalo Sabres are going to go on a No, the Ottawa Senators are going to win the Stanley Cup this year. <laughs> oh, okay. Here's well, why. Um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up here, and that's why the Toronto Maple Leafs will win the Stanley Cup this year. So uh, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Um, it really helps us out. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. This has been the Buds in the Box. Bye for now.